And W stands for Frontiers of the Natural World, where we try to promote and support research in the basic uh, or fundamental sciences. The hope is that people from different disciplines could come together and do meaningful and impactful research, both for the nation, for society and for the world. Coral reefs are home to a high diversity of plants and animals. But human activities and warmer seas caused by climate change are changing our reefs. By 2050, it's estimated they will be severely degraded. I want to tell you about a young marine scientist who is urgently identifying which coral to use to grow new reefs. It's not easy rehabilitating reefs. The usual practice is to use fast-growing corals such as Acapora coral to show high success rate, but in reality, the mortality rate is very high. With more than 430 coral species of the east coast of Peninsular Malaysia, which will be the chosen one? Under Project Nurin, Lin is nurturing reefs in nurseries. Corals have different growth rates depending on where they live. R growth type is fast growing but fragile. K growth type is slow growing but tougher. So, which one do we use for rehabilitation? To find the answer, Lin first needs a suitable study site. Narrowing it down to islands in marine protected areas, close to pristine reefs with minimum human activities, but has local scuba dive and logistical support. And the last criteria, are they all affordable? Unfortunately, staying on islands and diving are really expensive. Out of the blue, Lin gets a call from a dive centre in Pulau Rawa. For us, Orca Nation and Rawa Island Resort, it is fundamentally important that we protect natural oceanic habitats. At Pulau Rawa, we have one of the most beautiful, original, pristine, intact coral reefs. And now we are supporting the University of Malaysia with research on that specific reef. The currents are strong here. Reinforcements are required to prevent the structure from collapsing. To validate its scientific research for species population, the Pulih team has to find 30 donor coral colonies of R and K for each species. The coral fragments transplanted into the nursery will be monitored for the next 18 months. Anything could go wrong, from being smothered by algae to damaged by strong currents. Will it also survive the North East Monsoon? I'm very happy to see that all the fragments on my nursery are frying well. From my observations, I could clearly see that the R fragments have grown much more compared to the K fragments. And the K fragments are more resilient compared to the R fragments, as in they have a lower mortality rate. That's why we need to collect more scientific evidence on which corals are more suitable before embarking on coral rehabilitation efforts in Malaysia. Until that day happens, Lin will continue nurturing reefs in nurseries, believing it's key to the survival of our coral reefs. Hi Lin, morning. Good morning. So we're here today just to, uh, to try and talk. As we age, our cells' ability to divide and make new cells declines. What about corals? Will younger coral fragments grow faster? To seek answers, we dive to the molecular level. Project Shima investigates which coral branch should be selected within a colony. So as we humans grow older, our cells' capacity to multiply decreases, but corals are assumed to be immortal. It is thought that their healing capabilities remain the same as they grow, but studies have shown that this is not the case. Age seems to matter in corals too. If coral age matters in the context of coral restoration, how do we tell the age of a coral? 
In humans, it is easy to tell age. But in corals, it is not that clear. A coral colony is made up of thousands of individual animals known as polyps. Within a single colony, there are older and younger polyps. In a branching coral, young and old polyps are distributed in different branches. We can use the coral's genetic material, which is its DNA and RNA, to determine the age of polyps at the molecular level. Then, we relate that to the coral's growth rate in the nursery. In Project Shima, we want to know, do upper or lower branches grow faster when transplanted in a nursery? We must first identify lower and upper branches to sample in a colony. On a tree trunk, the upper and lower branches can be seen clearly. On the other hand, a coral colony can be a confusing maze. Once the branches have been selected, samples have to be rushed to land before the coral's genetic material degrades. The race to collect and preserve fragments requires collaboration. Good teamwork and speed ensures the samples reach the lab quickly and safely. If we find that there are truly differences between sampling from different parts of the coral, then a simple change in the sampling of fragments may make a difference in the success of coral restoration efforts. Well, we are at the early stages of processing DNA, but the results so far are looking promising. We will continue our work at the molecular level for a better way to rehabilitate our reefs. Dugongs, dolphins and turtles. These are just a few of the star attractions on the marine scientist's bucket list. But Mokmanying is the exception. Sea urchins, even though they look ugly and dangerous, but it could be really important for the coral reef. So I want to study them. Manying will attempt to track the sea urchins for 24 hours. It will be the first study of its kind in Malaysia. Can she be the urchin stalker? Manying's journey had begun. She had to get certified as a scuba diver, do outreach work with the public while designing her field studies. Coral reefs are the rainforests of the sea, but there is trouble in paradise. Algae in particular is a big problem. Once algae holds a reef in its grip, coral reefs are unlikely to grow back because there's simply no more space for them. In our race to save coral reefs, what are we missing? There is more to coral reef rehabilitation than just studying corals themselves. In the first study, we ran an experiment to test whether sea urchins remove algae from coral reefs effectively. This experiment is to test out whether by preventing the sea urchin grazing on the coral rubble will result in higher algae coverage and less coral settlement. We will have three different types of treatment cage. So this is the first one. This one with the net at the side will prevent the sea urchin growing into this area to grazing, but it allows the fish to come in. And the second one is the one with the close top that will prevent the sea urchin and the fish to grazing on the coral reef area. The third one is the contour cage with only the frame. In each cage, we will be putting in four towels. And after four months, we will measure the coral spat and also the algae coverage on each towel. To study the movement pattern of the sea urchin, first, we tag them. We tag them with a fishing hook attached to a numbered floating core. We will follow them for 24 hours to figure out what are they doing during the day and also the night. So by doing this experiment, we can understand their behaviour better. Now, we are going to track them. Urchin, Urchin, we are coming for you! We found most of the sea urchin. Even though we missed a few of them, they could be eaten by predator or travel too far from the survey location, but that's fine. We are going in four hours later. 
With Project Pule, coral reefs now have a fighting chance for survival. Choosing the right coral, determining its age, and understanding the role of sea urchins takes time and funding. Malaysia's coral reefs are everyone's responsibility. Donate to Project Pule's next phase and follow our progress.